Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's virtual COSC meeting. My name is Laura Hack. I'm the trustee elected in wards three and four and your board chair. We are very pleased to have so many of you joining us this evening. As a reminder to limit background noise, we would ask that you please mute your microphones and turn off your cameras. The presentation portion of tonight's cost meetings be recorded for the purpose of making the PowerPoint presentation and the recording available to all school councils on the CBE website. We'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional territories and oral practices of the Blackfoot nations, which include the Siksika, the Pikani, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Sutena and Sony Nakoda First Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their home in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I'd like to welcome my fellow trustees, Trustee Dana Downey, Trustee Marilyn Dennis, Trustee Patricia Bolger, Trustee Susan Vukadinovich, Trustee Nancy Close, and Trustee Charlene May. And also welcome the superintendents joining us this evening. Chris Yusey, our chief superintendent, and Miss Marla Martin Esposito, our chief communications officer. The agenda for tonight's meeting will include information on the three year school capital planning process and updates on the COVID-19 and high level overview of the budget process. There will be time for your questions and an opportunity for you to participate in a breakout room with your trustee. It's a great opportunity to share your thoughts and connect with other schools. I strongly encourage you to stay for the breakout session at the end of the meeting. We will be adhering to a tight timeline this evening to ensure there's enough time for the breakout room discussions to assist us in placing you in the appropriate breakout room with your trustee. We will please take, if you can please take a moment to ensure that your name appears in the team that matches your name that you registered under, first and last name, please. Um, as well as if you are on a mobile device, you may not be able to be placed in a breakout room. If you can switch to a laptop, that would be preferable. Um, if we're unable to determine who your ward trustee is, we will assign you to a random breakout room so that you can still participate. Our meeting tonight will wrap up at 8.30. I'm gonna pass over to talk about the three year school capital plan to trustee Marilyn Dennis. Thanks so much, Chair Hack. Uh, so good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we thought tonight would be a good opportunity just to give you a bit of information on the three year school capital plan, since this is the time of year that the Board of Trustees um, considers the capital plan for our next three years. So just to provide some overall context, I just wanted to start um, with a few timelines related to the capital plan. So um, school boards across the province are invited to submit their three year school capital plan in the spring of each year. And the capital plan includes a prioritized list of new school requests and also major modernizations for existing schools. And so later this month, the Board of Trustees will approve the Calgary Board of Education's three year school capital plan for submission to government on April the 1st. So cumulatively across the province, school boards will submit um, 400 requests for capital projects. And the provincial capital funding announcement takes place in February or March um, and generally follows the provincial budget announcement. So as you might have heard, the province announced earlier this month that uh, CBE will be receiving a new grade five to nine school in the community of Evanston. Uh, this was listed as our first priority in year one of our three year school capital plan for the 2022-2025 plan. So capital announcements are made based on the submissions from school boards made in the previous year. So any possible capital announcements for the CBE for next February or March will be based on the plan that we submit to government on April the 1st of this year. Design and construction of projects is coordinated in cooperation with Alberta infrastructure and for new schools, generally speaking, and of course, barring any unforeseen circumstances, 
Uh, we're looking at roughly three years from the capital announcement to when the project will be completed. And so often I'm asked the question, so how do new school construction projects and major modernizations land on the capital plan? So I'll just provide you a little bit of information on that. Um, for new school requests for all kindergarten to grade nine schools, a number of data points are considered to ensure you know, a well-informed, fair um, and equitable process um, for all communities. And so th those data points are the City of Calgary Civic Census, Canada Revenue Agency aggregated age data, current enrollment in our CBE schools, school bus transportation times, the City of Calgary suburban residential growth, and also Calgary and region economic outlook. And there also are a number of other considerations. Um, so that would be eligibility, accommodation options, um, site avail availability, and um, site readiness. So there is a population threshold when we are considering adding new schools to the capital plan. For elementary schools, we're looking at a population threshold of 10,000 people. And so sometimes two smaller communities will be considered together where their combined population won't exceed 10,000 people. For our middle and junior high school, high schools we consider 24,000 people and often adjacent communities are um, put together um, just as long as projected population threshold of approximately that 24,000 people is not exceeded. And for high schools, it's a much larger number. We're looking at 50 to 60,000 people. Um, adjacent communities, of course, are always combined since high schools have a much larger capacity and they are intended to draw upon multiple communities. We also look at accommodation options. So do we have room in already existing schools to be able to welcome students from another community? So as a school system, we do have an obligation to Calgarians and a commitment to the organization and our students uh, to be good stewards of our resources. And that includes maximizing the utilization of our existing schools. And also site availability and readiness. So is there a site that is available and developed and serviced to a point where it is ready for construction to begin? And of course, in the case of a high school, not only is the site ready, but also is it large enough to accommodate a high school? High schools generally are considered on slightly different criteria, but still include multiple factors. So as mentioned before, is there a suitable site ready for the construction of a high school? Where are our existing high school um, utilization rates? And so do we have space in existing schools? What is our existing student enrollment and enrollment projections? So how much more space do we need? And also, of course, the population threshold of 50 to 60,000 residents. Our unique settings are managed on a one-off basis, um, just because they have very specific um, needs and programming, and the demographic of students that they serve is also very um, specific. So on to major modernizations. So major modernizations can include all or part of a school building, and we'll update a school to improve its overall function, um, suitability for ongoing and changing programming. It'll also improve things like mechanical and electrical systems, replace worn fixtures and upgrade windows, doors, walls, among other things. So major modernizations on the capital plan can include elementary schools, middle, junior and high schools. Um, a number of factors are looked at when we um, consider a school for the capital plan for a major modernization. And that would include programming requirements, the five year projected school enrollment, um, quality of site location to serve students, the ability to upgrade teaching and learning environment. And also we want to minimize costs to operate and maintain the facility. So as the CBE's uh, uh, inventory of schools continues to age, we will see an increasing number of major modernizations placed on the three-year school capital plan. So over 55% of our buildings are over 50 years old, and in a few short years, 65% of our buildings will be over 50 years old. So as much um, as it is certainly a highlight to be able to open a new school, um, in a community. Um, if you've had the opportunity to 
see one of our schools that has had a major modernization, you can see how um, it definitely brings new life into the community and into that school. So there's a lot more information available to you on our website. Um, certainly the three-year school capital plan uh, for 22 to 25 is available on the website right now. Um, that will be updated and uh, the uh, there will be the uh, 2023 to 2026 plan will be posted on the website as soon as the board approves it or after the sorry after the board approves it at our March 29th meeting. Uh, so you'll be able to find it on the CBE website and also um, for any construction updates or um, any other information that you may be interested in when it comes to um, you know, the capital plan or any of our construction projects, you can also visit um, our website and that information is updated as often as possible. Thanks. All right, and we'll turn it over to Trustee Close for the COVID-19 update. Yeah, good evening um, and thanks uh, Trustee Dennis. Um, so March 13th, 2020, two years ago, and it, and it feels like eons ago sometimes. And I think we've each experienced um, the stress of the pandemic, uh, lockdown, restrictions, finding best ways to cope and stay safe, uh, and still find the best ways to stay connected with family, friends, and community. And some days, Maybe not so successfully, but here we are right now with that gorgeous spring light that's outside this evening. And although it would be wonderful to, if we could say that we no longer need COVID-19 updates, I think it is fair to say we are in transition. Uh, there are still unknowns uh, and still decisions that need to be made as we move forward. So tonight we want to share uh, briefly three things. Uh, first, uh, gratitude and appreciation. Uh, to our senior administration, a small but mighty team, um, our teachers, staff, students, uh, family, uh, for all that they have done to support and continue to support uh, in-class learning. It's been nothing but phenomenal and uh, lots of heavy lifting in all senses of that expression. And secondly, as we move forward, we ask for your uh, permission and patience to continue to find the best ways for all of us to work together uh, as we navigate, continue to navigate uncertainty and new information and in future decisions. Mm -hmm. And finally, on a practical uh, fiscal oversight note, um, our board uh, did receive approval from the Minister of Education uh, to use uh, 14 million from our limited operating reserves to cover the previous extraordinary costs related to COVID. And we are also uh, moving to a place where, where we're uh, adding in school, in-person school activities. So high school graduations and end of year celebrations and fun lunches. And I know your principals will obviously have much more information on that. And of course, our website has the up-to-date information related to provincial decisions related to COVID. And tonight, if you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. But over to Trustee Downey for uh, our budget update. Thank you, Trustee Close. I'm just going to adjust my camera here. Sorry, bear with me. Thanks very much. So I'm just going to review um, the budget process here. Uh, the diagram that you're looking at shows the timeline of the budget process here at the CBE. First, we look at enrollment changes and year over year changes like contractual obligations and inflation before the provincial budget is released. Schools conduct engagement with the school community and the school planning engagement has just concluded and the survey results for each school will be posted soon. These survey results help administration to sort out school budgets and fees. Uh, the provincial budget was announced on February 24th and the 2022-23 budget included $712 million of increase in public education funding over three years. Uh, when we hear that figure, we do need to keep in mind that 
public education is defined to include private schools, charter schools, home education, as well as our neighborhood and community schools in the CBE. And a CBE specific funding profile is expected to be provided uh, to us by the province before the end of March. On April 5th, the budget assumptions report will be shared with the board. This report describes a general overview. And a few days later, uh, schools will receive their RAM or Re resource allocation method funds. And centrally, we will provide service unit unit funding allocations. On May 17th, the budget is presented to the board for questions, and then on May 24th, the board will debate the budget. A balanced budget must be submitted to the province by May 31st. So that is your budget overview, and I will hand it now back to Chair Hack. Thank you, 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 Chair Hack. Thank you,